SCP-093 Mirror Test 2 Color Green Subject is D-54493 Female 23 years of age Average physique Subject's background shows instance of Grand Theft Auto and second-degree murder of two children during escape with vehicle. Subject is cooperative in all steps of testing. Subject enters the provided mirror while holding SCP-093, which emitted a green color. Outside technicians observed that the mirror retained a true reflection until subject had completely passed into it at which time the view changed to a farming landscape, heavily tinged in green, similar to the first test. Video feed follows an attached media. Camera activates, flickers to view. Subject is looking out over the same farmland reported by technicians. All greens through video feed are deeper and green tinge overlays the normal colors of objects similar to the blue tinge in Test 1. No landmarks from Test 1 are discernible as subject pans camera over area. Present is a field, long abandoned, in the middle of which stands the remains of a scarecrow of unknown design. Fragments left are rotted and torn. Nothing grows in the tilled land. A farmhouse is visible to the right of the field, large, two stories. A basement shelter entrance is visible at one end. Subject prepares her sidearm immediately, and is asked by control to relax before proceeding, her heavy breathing dominating the audio feed. Subject takes a few minutes and announces that she's fine, then proceeds as directed to walk the perimeter of the farmhouse. Children's Bicycles 2. A Boys and Girls lay against the house near the shelter doors. One of the doors to the shelter lay in the grass, torn from the entrance as evidenced by splintering wood. On the stairs lay clothes arranged in a descending order, shoes to shirt going down them, belonging to a boy. Subject begins screaming at Control, asking if this is some sort of sick joke. Control assures her they have never seen this environment either, and to please calm down. Subject takes several minutes to regain herself before continuing. It is unknown if SCP-093 is linking the subject's past with her landscape. After several minutes, subject agrees to continue. Communication to subject is muted, and conversation of control making commentary about subject's jittery attitude make up audio for one and a half minutes. Communication restored as subject reaches bottom of stairs. The cellar of the farmhouse is unremarkable and typical. Several wooden shelves line the far wall containing unidentified canned substances. Broken light fixtures sway gently from support beams. Camera is panned across the basement slowly. No evidence of footprints are visible, and the basement can be assumed to have been abandoned for some time. Subject begins to comment about a stench. As subject pans the area, a metal hatch is visible in the ground, similar to a bulkhead on a submarine with a turn handle. Subject remarks that the smell is at its worst around the hatch, and the dirt around the hatch is noted as being clumped and clay-like. The handle of the hatch is old, and the paint chipped. Subject coerced into turning the handle, which, when fully turned, opens the hatch. Subject begins coughing at the release of assumed old, stale air. When camera is tilted to view down the hatch, it is a white concrete tunnel, similar to the one found in the blue experiment, but in much better condition. Subject asked to descend ladder and close hatch behind her. After some convincing, subject agrees to descend but does not close the hatch, overlooked concerns about severing the pulley return system in doing so are acknowledged. Descent down the ladder and trip to the farmhouse has consumed approximately 53 meters of cable when bottom is reached. 
The inside of the hatch appears to be a bunker, ill-suited to long-term usage. It is spacious, about half the size of the actual cellar itself, containing three bunks, one for a couple and two for single use. Several boxes of food, similar to those found during Blue, marked as cereal, fill a waste container near the hatch bottom. On the beds are two skeletons, and on the floor is a third, lying next to which is a simple six-shooter revolver, containing no ammunition. Three spent casings are across the floor near the gun. On the other side of this skeleton is a bound book in good condition. This is retrieved and placed into a field kit container upon request. The gun is left alone, per request from control. Subject examines more of the bunker, focusing on a desk where a newspaper has been cut and is in good condition. The clipped articles are recovered using a field kit container. Little else of interest to be brought back is in the bunker as the camera is panned around. Trash bags containing clothing, a few children's toys resembling popular 1950s era products are lined against the wall. Subject is requested to leave the bunker and then sharply asked to wait by a control technician who directs the camera view to an area near the exiting doorway to the hatch. Closer inspection as subject moves in finds that a small area has been fitted with what appears to be an ethernet jack, the cover of which has been forced slightly away from the wall by a strange amber-like substance. Subject refuses to touch or collect a sample, commenting that it stinks so bad that if they want it, they can come get it themselves. Control declines, and Subject leaves Bunker. As Subject grips ladder to leave, the camera pans up for a moment, and at the top of the tunnel, a humanoid figure is seen peering down. Control asks Subject to confirm figure. Subject states nothing is up there, and begins to climb. Figure draws out of camera view after first rung is touched by Subject who ascends without incident. At the top of the tunnel, no other life is seen. Nothing has been disturbed. Subject insists nothing was there and closes the hatch, then immediately vomits. Subject coughs and uses a supplied water bottle to gargle, then freezes and asks if Control is hearing that. Control reports no audio. Subject approaches the cellar hatch cautiously, with firearm drawn, and lifts her head just enough so camera can view outside area. In the distance, approximately 700 meters from the farm, two massive humanoid beings are crawling across the landscape. The entities do not notice the subject, who remains quiet, but whose drawn sidearm is visibly trembling. Subject requested to remain still and silent as beings move. They are featureless, facing at an angle moving across the field of vision so the faces are only visible for a few moments. During this time, it is clear they have no facial features. The arms they use to drag themselves are short at times and long at others, stretching out to varying lengths each time they move. There is no rear area to the beings. All bodily design appears to end at the torso. The two creatures take approximately 10 minutes to disappear into the distance before the subject begins to panic and begs to return. Request declined. Subject instructed to enter the home from the cellar and not to leave the home under any circumstances. The first floor is entered through a hatch in the ceiling that opens with rusty creaks that cause subject to pause for 37 seconds before continuing upward and entering a kitchen. A heavy layer of dust coats all items in the kitchen. The refrigerator is left open. All food is spoiled. Adjacent the kitchen is a living area that subject enters slowly. There is a recliner, a couch, and a television, all of 1950s style design. In the recliner is a laptop, whose case also resembles 1950s decor and is coated in heavy dust. 
Opening the laptop reveals the last moments of its operating system, Faithful OS, leaving a standby mode and immediately shutting off. Laptop has no external power source and will not power back on. When asked to recover laptop, it brings the cushion of the recliner with it, the two stuck together. Subject advised to leave laptop where it is. The inside door leaving the home is nailed shut with thick wood planks. No attempt made to interact with these. Camera view pans to a staircase leading upstairs. Subject ascends the stairs without being asked, and the stairs remain silent to control surprise. When subject reaches top of stairs, a hallway with two doors is viewed, one on each side, and at the end of the hall a dumbwaiter is inlaid into the wall. Subject opens door on the left on her own, which opens to a master bedroom. The bed is neatly made, but the wardrobe next to it is thrown open, and clothes are everywhere on the floor. Subject finds laid out on the bed several pieces of jewelry, and is informed to leave them. Subject begins to protest, then comments they stink, and leaves them alone, promptly leaving the room. Subject asked to open second door. The second door opens, and gives a view of a shared children's bedroom, obviously boy and girl given the types of toys and clothes scattered on the floor. There is also a window, which subject approaches and wipes with a curtain to clear dust. Subject requested to move camera to window, and does so. The farmland is visible, and approximately 40 kilometers from it at best guess, a city. As the camera starts to draw back, it pans down and films the area around the house. Approximately 300 figures, similar to those from the footage captured during the blue test, are visible around the home, all staring up. Subject asks to confirm figures, but states nothing is there. Subject requested to return, and quickly agrees. Egress from the house is uneventful. Police system shows no erratic behavior. As subject returns to point of pulley wire's origin, a loud groaning noise causes the picture to reverberate. Technicians at control report they were also able to hear the noise and experience the vibration. Subject returns through the point of origin without investigation, and mirror returns to reflective surface. SCP-093 relinquished. Video ends. Returned newspaper fragments, filed as Green Test Recovered Materials Our second test recovered many materials that helped to establish a sequence of events for this alternate world. The diary recovered provided a glimpse into the last days of the owners of the home from which it was recovered, and may represent activity in other areas of the world as well. Newspaper Article 2 Farms surrounding the city of Silver Feathers have reported being unable to contact neighbors across voice or video feeds in the last week, until an approval is granted by the Regional High Father. An investigation cannot commence, but he assures the people that these events have not escaped his attention. Residents are advised to notify their local Blessed Voice daily, so any further disappearances can be addressed immediately. Residents are also advised to begin stocking their shelves to be ready for any situation. Newspaper Article 3 Following the disappearance of the Blessed Voices from several outlying regions around the city of Silver Feathers, the Regional High Father has declared a concern for safety and livelihood. Under this declaration, all farmland residents must evacuate immediately to their shelters. Scattered reports of an unclean have come in, but have yet to be verified. Newspaper Article 4 
the city of glorious song has stopped responding to any and all communications. The worst can only be assumed, and our hearts go out to any who are in the region who are unable to hear our words. The city of Silver Feathers Blessed Militia has reported several incursions by the unclean into the city and have exterminated four of the abominations before they could become a danger to any residents. The Regional High Father reminds the citizens to avoid direct confrontation with the unclean. Conventional arms do nothing to the unclean. Only the most holy of implements will penetrate their sin. So do not put yourself in danger. Any citizens who suspect their neighbors indulging in heavy sin should immediately contact the Blessed Militia through designated checkpoints. Diary I have the distinct feeling we're gonna die, so I'm gonna write all this down now for whoever come along and finds our bones. My name is Herverf Jakulsiv, and I'm a farmer. I grows the rab sticks and the husk ears. We raise the inks and the ooms. It's me, my wife, Ophiri, and our two little ones, Traven and Listeria. I got this book in trade from the blessed man who came by for food and shelter. He told us to start getting our shelter ready and not to let no other blessed who come by, even though we're here. Says the whole thing break down. Nothing right no more. So what does as he said? Got it all ready. We going down there in the next day or so. In the morn, he was gone. Which made the wife sad, as he was polite to us, unlike most of the others. Figure he didn't want to be no birder. Bliss went out looking for him, just to be sure he weren't just round the house. He didn't turn up nowheres, so we guess he left. Strange enough, Liz found his clothes round a mile or so away, and all his gear, but no him. She left it all there, and that's for the best, if what happened then I think. I'm clearly no educated man, don't claim to be, but I can put two and two together and tell you things are bad out there. For everyone, and especially for us. Because it's coming way too close. Sometimes, you can smell it. That's when we hide. It smells like a leg of meat that's been rotten for way too long and just won't go back into the dirt. Even the soil is rejecting them, I guess, refusing to let them be buried to die. It came too fast. We weren't ready. The smell came in the night. Maybe we would have been fine. But the little ones were afraid, so we went to the shelter. Trev was slow. He saw it. Kept staring at it as it shambled by. It ignored us until he screamed when I was getting Liss and the mist down in the shelter. I went to get him, but it was too fast. I saw him standing up there, screaming, and then its head came down on him, pressed over him. He tried to run for the stairs, tried to get to us, but then, in a blink, <laughs> he was gone, and it pulled away. His clothes fell into the cellar, like he vanished out of them. I got into the shelter, slammed the hatch, and locked it. I think it knows we're in here now. It'll try to get in, take us too. No telling how long we got. Plenty of food, though. I was wrong. The food was rotten. Something got into it, or I just didn't notice. We're eating what we can. There's food, but not enough. And that thing ain't leaving. It's trying to find ways in. Smelt the smell. Coming from the life web plug in the wall. Something seeped through it and we kept away. It got all hard like a rock and don't smell no more. Maybe the power in the plug finally let it die. I went up to peek. Cellar is fine. 
Trev's clothes still on the stairs. Peeked outside. We're not gonna make it. There were ten. Twenty. Thirty. Couldn't count. So many. All going in a circle around the house. Looking at it with those faceless faces. And the stink. Oh, the stink. Went back into the shelter and locked the door. I think... I don't want to see my family rot away. I think faster is better. The miss, she agrees. We won't tell Liz. She'll be first. Then my wife. My love. Then me. I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry. I gave the best life to my family possible. It was them holy ones that brought this. I'm gonna pen this in memory to my great pap. He was old and knew stories older than himself. Says those unclean they preach about, those unfertile zones they say stay out of, all cause of the most holy bringing the world together. Them things are the ultimate sin. Everything about us that was evil and impure, it's them. They don't know nothing but doing what they do. Don't even know why they do it. They just do it. Take us into them. Then we're gone. I asked Pap what they were, and he lit a stick. Took a puff, and he said, Don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody who will admit to it. But if you see this symbol, if you see it, you run, boy. You run fast, you run far, and you hide. And you never go back where you saw it. That's all I know. I remember the symbol was on the rock he kept on his neck under his shirt. Next day, Pap was gone. Nowhere to be found. Dad weren't sad, said he knew it happened one day. Pap went home. See you soon, Dad. Pap. Data. Expunged. Symbol matched symbol found on SCP-093's surface as one of the deeper engravings. Also matched symbols noticed on video feed of final test on SCP-093 duplicates.